Hey there, my beautiful overachieving business mamas. Welcome to the Moxie Movement, where we're tearing down myths and propelling women like you to success, both in business and at home. I'm Sarah Greener, your guide on this journey, because I've walked this tightrope too. And together, we're here to help redefine what success looks like. Dive in for real talk, actionable steps, and a community that gets the hustle of juggling motherhood, wife life, and that entrepreneurial drive. It's time for a little moxie. Every successful woman I know in business has one of two relationship statuses. She's single, or she has a supportive husband, wife, partner at home. There's no third option. Hi, I'm Sarah Greener. Welcome to the Moxie Movement. I'm excited that you're here. I want to talk about how important it is to have a supportive partner if you have a partner and the difference that it makes in your business. The reality is business is hard enough. Like we are working so hard to make everything work without battling the lack of support from your partner, without having to deal with them not helping you succeed. And this is the very person that should have your back in every way, shape or form. There's no reason for this person not to be supporting you. And yet I talk to women all the time that are battling through this journey of business while having a significant other, their partner in life, not support them on this part of their journey. And I I just cannot understand, I cannot comprehend how hard that must be to do. I am deeply grateful, even when he sends me text messages like the one he did this morning, for my husband Johnny. We have been in business together pretty much since we started dating and we support each other. Do we agree all the time? Absolutely not. And we still support each other on our journeys in business. To give you some context, this text message is sent after our second engine has been stolen in a month. He managed to figure out where it was, the joys of small communities. And I got this text message this morning. I could only read the first line. About to smash a window to get our six horsepower back. The second line says, comma, police here kiss. But I didn't see that. I had a small heart attack before I opened the whole text message and saw that he was in fact there with the police and not there on his own. Um, yes, supportive. <laughs> not very good with his text messaging, but, <laughs> but other than that, he's awesome. I think what I hear a lot of is women being diminished for the work that they're putting into their business. So like they're putting too many, too many hours in for not enough financial return. They're putting in the right amount of hours, but they're still get, not getting the right financial return. Their business is taking away from them cooking and cleaning and keeping house and doing all of those things at home. And I think it's all super interesting to me that this is a challenge for people. But I think it more comes down to not so much that they don't support your business, that the it's that they're more worried that the business is going to change their status quo and what i mean by that is that they're more worried that the business is going to require so much of you that they're going to have to start sharing the load at home equally and that is going to change their life substantially if you have been picking up the slack around how around the house and i think it's really important to recognize particularly if you've had kids as well is that keeping a home and being the primary parent are two at least full-time jobs just in and of themselves and that's two full-time roles if you're doing it all on your own on top of your business which is another full-time job the simple way to check if you fall into category number two is this if you have a partner and you don't notice when they go away or your life gets easier when they go away, then it's likely that you don't fall into category number two. And I think it's important to check in on that. Like when Johnny goes away, things get harder for me. <laughs> there are jobs that I don't have to do. There is thinking that I don't have to do that when he is away, I have to pick up and do. I don't not notice him being there. Now, is it good for us to have breaks away from our significant others? Particularly if you do business together like Johnny and I do. Absolutely, we should have time on our own. And 
I should notice when he's not there. I should notice in terms of the, how the home runs, how the home feels. I should notice how parenting happens and how parenting feels when I have to do it on my own. And it, there is more for me to do when Johnny is not there. And you would have to check in with him, but I would suspect that there is more for him to do when I am not there. Now, when we go away, we don't then have to manage, text message, remind each other of the things that need to be done at home. It's just that when he isn't, there is more load for me. And when I'm not there, there's more load for him. Why does that happen? Because we've shared the jobs across our home and our parenting in a way that is equitable for us. It's not 50-50 chopped down the middle. One of us does three nights, and then one of us does three nights, etc. One of us does three drop-offs, and one of us does three pickups. It's not split like equally down the middle, but in terms of a load, it feels very even. When he goes away, I'm immediately in awe of anyone who is doing it on their own, because being a primary parent and the housekeeper, the home keeper, that, that, that's tough when you're trying to run a business as well. That's the first thing, is you want to check in and go, where do I sit? You know, if you're single. And the second thing, if you're in that second category, is to figure out whether the load feels heavier at home without your partner or whether it feels easier or if maybe you don't even notice. If those two things are true for you, then there are some things that you can start to work through. You can carry on as you are. There is no judgment here. If you would like to carry on that way, you can absolutely carry on that way because changing it is going to require some big conversations. It's going to require some courageous conversations and it's going to require some honesty and some vulnerability with both yourself and with your intimate partner. And we are not always ready for that journey. And that's okay. And if and when you ever become ready for that journey, you can come back and tap into this and have a look at what you might like to shift that you could do so you could carry on with the status quo. The second thing is that you could start to shift the expectations of how your household and your family run. Now, I am not telling you that this is easy. I would never tell you that this is easy. We have a pretty equitable household and still these conversations have to happen on a regular basis, both for Johnny with me and for me with Johnny, because we're human. <laughs> And humans are allowed to be human. We're allowed to stuff up. We're allowed to make mistakes. We're allowed to get a bit lazy and load it onto him. Oh, no, he's allowed to get a bit lo lazy and load it onto me. We're allowed to do that. We're just not allowed to stay there when our partner says, hey, come help me a bit more. We still have these conversations about resetting expectations around communications, around parenting. As kids get older, the things that we have to do to parent them changes. You start to get to it. We get into this point where it feels like Scarlett has a better social life than us. Transporting her around the countryside to all the different things that she does has become more of a role for both of us in our lives and our day-to-day -day operations, as it were. And I want you to really think about... For anyone that's looking at it going, oh, it does feel heavier, it doesn't, I don't notice when they go away, that what are the things you need to do to reset expectations? And some of this is going to be about how do we have a conversation that's, that gets really clear on two bits of information. One is that there's a physical doing task involved in running homes and there's physical doing tasks that are involved in parenting. And I'm putting aside all the business stuff for now because I'm assuming that is your job, that you go to work for a certain period of time. And I'm talking about the load that happens outside of that. And you might be thinking, Sarah, why are you talking about that? Because you're in the business world. I'm talking about that because if your business and your life don't blend together seamlessly, then the business stuff is harder. The impact of the load, the physical load, the doing... And more importantly, the second part of it, the thinking load, the decision-making load, the choices that you have to make on a daily basis for yourself and all the other humans in your household has a direct impact on your ability to be creative and successful in your business. If you don't have a clear picture between you and your partner at home, about what those loads look like. It's a really good idea to sit down and have a conversation about it. It's different for everyone. It's going to depend on what happens in your household. It's going to depend on how many children. It's going to depend on the ages of the children. It's going to depend on what activities they do or don't do. What sort of schooling regime you have. Are you in normal school or are you homeschooling or some version of that? All of these things have different components. 
what cultural activities are they involved in, what sporting activities are they involved in, all of that stuff's going to have an impact on it. You get really granular about this stuff. How many pets do you have? Do you have cats or dogs or guinea pigs or snakes? I don't know. The last is not something I would be having, but you do you, right? All of those things have an impact on it. Where do you live? Do you live in the city? Do you live in the country? Are there public transport options available to you? All of these things are going to impact the load that takes up for you. What's important to you as a family? What do you guys do as fun activities? How many holidays do you take a year? What is is the financial situation of your household? All of these things are going to impact, first and foremost, the decision making, the thinking that has to happen. Secondly, they will impact the doing tasks that need to be done. And if you are the person that retains all of the decision making and all of the management for it, you probably do it all in here. Something that you're in complete control of is you can get it out of here and down into some sort of format, some sort of routine, ritual, calendar. I don't mind, but get it out of your head because my goodness gracious, you are carrying so much inside that head of yours, especially because you're running a business as well, remember? And you're probably carrying a lot of that in there too. Get it out of your head. That will help lessen the load. It also gives you a really good framework to start from to have this conversation to go, hey, this is all the stuff that's going on to make our household run birthdays, play dates, Christmas stuff, Easter's, all of the things that you do that someone else doesn't have to think about. If you got that all down on paper, that would be a very good place to start this conversation from. Because you're not going to go from where you're at now to this beautiful equitable space. And even when you do get to the equitable space, and again, I'm going to say that we, I feel I can't speak for Johnny, (laughs) you have to ask him, but I feel like we're in a pretty equitable place in our household and we still have to have conversations regularly about communications and decision making and what are we doing next and where are we going and how are we going to do it because that's how relationships stay being supportive of each other because you're constantly evolving and growing as individuals. The conversation you had 12 months ago six months ago, probably even three months ago, is less relevant if you had exactly the same conversation today. You've got to consistently have these conversations. Get really clear on what is the workload and then get really clear on what are the bits that you would love to keep doing and maybe find out from your partner what are the bits that they would love to do and then you can look at what's falling through the gaps and figure out how collectively the two of you are going to make that stuff happen. Because if you guys just sit down and do this thinking and planning and deciding together, it's already taking a load off of you. Then you're going to start shifting and asking for a change in behavior. And this is not magic. You're not going to sit down and have this conversation and they're going to show up tomorrow and do everything perfectly. It's just not. They have got years and years of social conditioning that says that the majority of this work should fall to the female in the household, should fall to you as the mother, as the keeper of the home. That is absolutely not their fault. That is a piece of societal work that as a collective conscious, we need to do some more work on. We need to keep doing work on this because I'm still having these conversations in 2024. And I suspect you're still having these conversations in 2024. I want you to be mindful that it's not their fault. It is their responsibility to start stepping up and changing when you ask for it. And you're not going to be able to do it with just one conversation. It's going to be consistent resetting of expectations. It's going to be consistent being appreciative and praising when you do get the help. And it's going to be consistent doing the bit that you said that you would do. You cannot step in and do the work for them and expect them to remember that's their job if you train them by treating them like they don't have to do it. If you step in and hang out the washing every time it gets forgotten, they'll never, ever change their behavior to do that because it just gets done. If you haven't seen it, there's a YouTube video about a magic coffee table that keeps getting cleared and this bloke, he's very much a bloke, very much a Kiwi bloke, I think. Maybe he's Australian, can't remember. Anyway, he's from Down Under and he talks about this magic coffee table and how things keep getting cleared off of it. The, that is exactly what I'm talking about when you when people treat you the way they that you train them to. If you keep cleaning the stuff up for them, they will expect that the magic fairies will keep coming and doing it. 
That's your second option is to sit down, have these conversations, to consistently have them, to be appreciative when your expectations are met, to correct your expectations when they're not met, and to not step in and fill the gap with your body. It's a theme over here at the Moxie Movement where we say don't fill the gap with you. We talk about it in your business and now I'm talking about it in your life. Don't consistently fill up the things that get left with you doing all the work. Cool? And then the last option that you have. One is to stay as you are. Two is to have these conversations consistently, have these conversations and, and shift them. And three, your last option is to put yourself in category one. And again, I am totally open to being told that I'm wrong and to meet someone who is successful and happy and running their own small business that is in an unsupportive relationship. I have yet to come across that person and I've been doing this 20 years. All of my girlfriends that are successful and happy and running their business are either single or they have a supportive husband, partner, wife, whoever is their significant other. That's my experience of this journey in business. If you're in number one, if you're a single woman doing this all on your own, you're a freaking rock star. You need to go and celebrate you. If you fall into category two, you need to celebrate you because I know that making sure that happens takes work. It requires conversations. It requires learning about ourselves and learning how to communicate and working consistently on how to stay strong as a team in your relationship. Celebrate yourself first and also go and give that significant other in your life, your partner, your husband, your wife, some love and tell them that, they, that you appreciate them because they are definitely helping you be the glorious exception on your journey. And if you're not in either one of those categories, do something about it. Do not stay where you are right now because the last place you want to be in a year's time from now is in exactly the same position because you are able to change it. If you are not changing it, you are choosing it. And if you want to be a glorious exception, if you want to be the exception to all those statistics that say we as women still do 70% of the workload at home right up until we earn 100% of the income, then you will need to make some changes. Until next time, stay moxie.